Hey guys, before this video begins, I need to give an announcement and a quick trigger warning. So, for the announcement, all these anime characters that I depict in my videos do not act the same or exact way in the anime. I'm letting you guys know ahead of time because I saw a comment on one of my recent videos saying that, oh, if the character behaves like this, they'll never watch the anime. I am only changing the character for this particular video. Also, quick trigger warning, this video may contain blood and the mention of someone dying or aka getting shipped out. I'm not going to say who, you're going to find out later. But anyways, enjoy the video. Hey YN, you happily turned towards Emma who was jumping all over you. Come play tag with us, she cheered as a couple of kids jumped onto her. Okay, you smiled, then ran with her and the other children. Apparently, Don had challenged Emma to a game attack for a change. As you all waited for the game to start, you glanced over Ray over by the tree with his book. It was quite a mystery to you. I mean, sure, you guys were understandably close as siblings. Almost as close as Emma and Norman. But you can never really tell what he's thinking. Suddenly, Ray looked up from his book and you two locked eyes. For a moment, it seemed like a staring contest until Norman ruined the moment and came running up to you. Hey, YN, why don't we just stick together? Norman said, smiling softly. Eh? Are you sure that's wise, Norman? You asked, though you knew very well that Norman was the smartest kid here. Yeah, if we team up and combine our knowledge, we'll be unstoppable. Don't worry. Don is the one who's it. He winked at me. You thought about it for a minute before nodding your head excitedly. It was always fun to work in teams. Little did you know a certain bookworm was glaring at the two of you as you joined the others. You helped Norman climb up a tree and overlook the area hiding behind leaves and branches. You both sat back to back, keeping watch of your surroundings. When you looked down on the ground, you trembled slightly. You always had a fear of heights, though you never talked about it, mostly because you wouldn't be in this situation usually. But it seems that you didn't notice you climbed up this high with Norman. Why then? Norman asked and turned around. You gasped slightly and turned towards him. What's wrong? Norman questioned. Oh, it's nothing. I just thought I saw someone. Oh. Norman replies and turns away slowly. After a while, you sat in silence, but you just couldn't keep your eyes off the ground. You started to feel sick and held your sides and onto a branch in case you fell. Are you afraid of heights? Norman broke the silence. You flinched slightly and turned towards him only to find his eyes staring at you curiously. Yeah, but that's not a problem. I can handle it. You said shakily, but you suddenly cursed yourself for stuttering. Suddenly you felt Norman's hand grasp yours and you flinched to sudden contact. Norman, we don't have to stay up here if you don't want to, he said sincerely. You flushed a little at his kindness before you shook your head. It's fine. This is the only way we can. Norman, look out, you warned. But it was a little too late. A rock had suddenly hit Norman right in the head. Norman gasped out of pain and held onto the side of his head. But he lost his balance and fell out of the tree. Norman! You yelled and quickly climbed down from the tree to his side. What's going on? I heard a yell. Emma asked as, as she and a few other children ran towards you. It's Norman. Something hit him. He fell out of the tree. You panicked and tried to help him up. Oh no! Emma shrieked. And... Help me, and helped you help him up. She turned to the children. Go get Mama, she told them, and they died frantically running off. While they ran, you guys walked back to the house as you held his wound. You pondered for a bit about where the heck that stone came from, and if someone threw it intentionally, and if someone did, who? After a while in the distance, you saw Mom and few other children running with her. Oh my goodness, Norman! Her face was full of worry. She quickly stopped you and Emma and patched up his wound. She sighed in relief. Good thing he didn't lose that much blood. Mom beckoned you and Emma to let go so she can pick up Norman. I think that's enough time for today. It's dinner time anyways. Emma, you and Wyan go find the others and inform them of the news. The rest of you, come with me. Okay, Mom, we piped and ran deeper into the forest to find the others. After that day, things will never be the same again. Every day, whenever Norman would stay close to you, something would happen to him. In the library, when you two were reading together, a handful of books happened to fall on him. 
In the dining hall, whenever you and him were setting up meals together, something would make him trip and drop the plates and utensils all over the floor. At night, after you two snuck out to talk, Norman returned to his bed, only to find ma that his mattress had books underneath it, which explains why he woke up sore often. You sat underneath the tree, thinking and collecting the dots together. Couldn't Norman have been the victim of some childish bullying? That someone had a secret grudge against him? It makes no sense. It was perfectly clear he had no enemies at the house. Just then, the shoes... You saw the shoes rubbing against each other in the grass, interrupted your thoughts. Yo, Ray said, looking down at you as he stared up in surprise. Oh, hey, Ray, you smiled gently before looking down again. What's the matter? You're not playing tag with the others today. He noticed, stuffing his hands in his pocket. Norman got hurt again today. He's constantly staying inside because of his injuries. It's been several weeks, so I'm starting to wonder... I'm just causing these things to happen, you said sadly, looking down. It's not you. Of course it wouldn't be you, Ray assured me. How? I mean, maybe if I just stayed away from him, he won't get hurt again, you said, tears trying to drip down on your cheeks. You swore you seen Ray flinch, but probably it was just because of your eyes becoming blurry. Ray kneeled down and rested his head on your shoulder. Shh. Don't cry. It's not worth crying about, he said. He is not worth crying about, he mumbled. Huh? You sniffed, rubbing your eyes and pulling away from him. He sighed and ran his fingers through your hair. It's nothing. Ray shook his head while you tilted yours. Why don't you read with me? I think you like this book since you've been reading it so much, he suggested. You stared at him blankly for a minute before nodding excitedly. Sure. Not... Long after that, you and Ray grew even closer than before. Of course, not enough to match yours and Norman's relationship. Unfortunately, you would soon regret that you even spoke to him. Everyone, say goodbye to Norman. The day had finally come. Eventually, Norman had been able to find foster parents. While Emma cried and hugged Norman over and over, you and Ray reflected on how he did during these past 11 years, or at least you did. Yeah, yeah, Ray said, agreeing to whatever you said. And you joined Emma and Norman in a group hug afterwards. Hey, YN? Norman whispered. Yeah? I love you. Don't forget that, he whispered, hugging you tightly. You gasped and hugged him back. Me too! Soon after, Ray had asked you to meet him in the hallway after dark, while Mom was out with Norman. Ray, is there something wrong? You whispered as he held out his lantern to you. Listen, it's about time I told you the truth. After explaining, your heart stopped as he explained all the details with a careless expression on his face. So, Norman's gonna die? He whispered shakily. That's right. No, no, I don't like this. Honestly, I would rather have him die than... You held yourself, tears streaming down your cheeks. No! Ray snapped stomping his foot against the cold wooden floor. He jumped a little at his actions. That bastard doesn't deserve your tears. He angrily gritted his teeth. His composure of being cold is long gone. What? You asked and little and backed away. YN, be honest with me. You looked at him, fearing what would come next. Do you have feelings for Norman? Ray asked. And he clenched his fist. Y yeah, you admitted. Hearing Ray tisk and grab both of your shoulders. Why don't you get it? Ray yelled. You pushed him away, horrifying of the way he was acting. Ray, shush. We don't know if Mom's back. That doesn't matter, he interrupted you. I can control whoever gets shipped out. Your eyes widened and you covered your mouth. Ray, what does that mean? You asked in horror. I told Mom to get rid of Norman, he explained. I'm her pawn, so I can tell her who's a threat to this house. But Norman's not a threat. He's, tw he's our friend. Not anymore. I can't believe how you could be so blind, Ray said coldly. You're confusing me, Ray. Please tell me why. It's because I love you. I'm the only one who really cares about you, he said. Ray, you hold your sides and look up at him. And I will get rid of anyone who stands in between our happiness, Ray declared. Or if you want to tell Emma... Gilda or Dawn, I won't hesitate to ship you out next. 
He shivered. You traitor. You heard him chuckle and lift up your chin with his finger. It's either me or death, Wyan. Pick one. He let go of you and walked away, leaving you to sob. Sob about how you was in this helpless situation. Sob about how you witnessed race to self. And most importantly, sob about how you'll never see Ray again, the one you truly loved.